Say a civil aircraft needs to travel from Heathrow Airport, London to John F. Kennedy International Airport, New York. Ideally, one would wish to fly from LHR to JFK on a direct path for a lot of reasons like shorter flight time, saving fuel, etc. Now let us see whether it is possible. Since the aircraft is flying under 60 minutes rule, let's draw a circle with 60 minutes flying distance as radius and Shannon Airport, Ireland as the center. Are you wondering why we suddenly started talking about Shannon Airport when talking about a flight between London Heathrow to New York JFK? It is because Shannon Airport is the last airport accessible to the flight on the direct line path from LHR London to JFK New York. Thus, the circle around Shannon Airport is important to the 60 minutes rule. In the same way, let's draw 60 minutes travel time circle around Gander Airport, Newfoundland, Canada. Gander is the first airport the flight would encounter on the straight line path after crossing ocean. Now, let's consider a scenario where a twin engine aircraft on the way from LHR to JFK crosses Shannon Airport. Somewhere between Shannon and Gander, one of the engines go down. In such an emergency, the aircraft must perform an emergency landing with only one engine in operation along with other support systems. But the aircraft might be capable of flying only for about 60 minutes with one engine in operation. The two nearest airports, Gander and Shannon, are both more than 60 minutes away from the point where the engine has failed. So now, the aircraft has no other option but to land on the ocean, risking lives on board. This will not be allowed by regulatory authorities for the simple reason that passenger safety is of highest importance. Because of this reason, direct flight between LHR and JFK are not allowed under 60 minutes rule. So, now the question comes, how can one travel from LHR to JFK under 60 minutes rule? To fly from LHR to JFK under 60 minutes rule, one must find flight path with alternate airports within 60 minutes of flight distance for an emergency landing. When we draw 60 minute circle around Keflavik Airport, Iceland, this circle overlaps with the one around Shannon. Similarly, the one drawn around Konjalusuak, Greenland overlaps with the one around Keflavik. The circle drawn around Goose Bay, Newfoundland overlaps with previous and so on. Thus, we find a path from LHR to JFK, however a longer path. If the aircraft has an emergency, such as engine failure, it can find an alternate airport for emergency landing within 60 minutes of flight time. The downside of this path is that it consumes more fuel and that the journey is longer for passengers and crew members. Now let's assume just like we have the 60 minutes rule, there exists a 120 minutes rule. That means a twin engine aircraft under 120 minutes rule has the capability to fly for 120 minutes with only one engine in operation. If there existed an aircraft which can perform as such? Will we get straight line path between LHR and JFK? Like before, let's draw a circle with 120 minutes flying distance as radius with Shannon Airport as the center. Similarly, let's draw a 120 minute circle with Gander as the center. It's obvious from the map that both circles cover a large geographical area and more importantly, both the circles overlap. With this, it is possible to get direct flight path between LHR and JFK. Now, if a twin-engine aircraft flying from LHR to JFK has an emergency, let's say at point A, it can safely return and land at Shannon Airport. On the other hand, if it has an engine failure around point B, it can safely land at Gander Airport. Otherwise, a twin-engine aircraft can safely complete a direct path journey between LHR and JFK. Such a flight saves a great deal of fuel, offers better comfort for passengers and allows airline to operate more flights. Now let's see how does world map looks like with changing ETOPS ratings. 
What you see now is how ETOP 60 map would look like for an aircraft with an engine out speed of 343 knots. That means if we had an aircraft which can fly 343 nautical miles per hour, the ETOP 60 map would look like this. You can see there are a lot of gaps not covered by 60 minutes bubbles. Can you imagine how long a route would it be for an aircraft to fly from Johannesburg, South Africa to Buenos Aires, Argentina under the ETOPS 60 rule? Similarly, ETOPS 120 map would look like this. As you can very well see from the map, ETOPS 120 creates a direct flight path from Europe to North America over Atlantic Ocean. However, flight path from Johannesburg to Buenos Aires would continue to be a bit longer. With ETOPS 240, the globe is more or less covered. With this one, we can fly direct even from Johannesburg to Buenos Aires as shown in the picture. With ETOPS 330, even part of polar regions are covered. Try yourself various ETOPS maps at www.gcmap.com for different aircraft.